Yeah, man, give it up for our team. Our, we put this on. We're, actually, there's a lot of stuff going on after. We got some great games, uh, I believe Rochelle put together right there. Amen. You know, I, you know, what God is doing here is he's really drawing us together to move together. Amen. Right? So we're getting outside of the four walls, and we're, God wants us to move uh, together, not only in our uh, minds, but also in our hearts. Amen? Yeah. The reason why we are here, again, is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only reason why we're all here. Amen? And again, we just welcome all of you who are visitors are com coming here today. We're going to continue the series on forgiveness. So let me ask you this question. How have you been doing with forgiving this week? Good. Uh, well, let's say about a, between one and ten, five, uh, zero, ten. No. Okay. Looks like we got a lot more to learn then about forgiveness. Well, one of the things I realized um, I'm going to touch on today is why people have difficulties with forgiveness is because of their perception about themselves and the perception of God. Amen? Amen? A perception about themselves and the perception of God. Okay? Which leads to this question, which I've come across on many occasions throughout the years, is why would God forgive me? Why would God forgive me? Now, if we as a church can answer that together with total understanding, we're going to impact this generation. Amen? You're going to make a difference in this community because there's a lot of people out there still questioning that even when they go to church. Why would God forgive me? And we're going to tackle that question, okay? Why would God forgive me? All right? So number one, I'm going to be real simple today, okay? Because we're at the beach and we want to go swimming, right? <laughs> and we want to eat. Number one, why would God forgive me? Number one is because God loves you. Because God loves you. Okay, if you can't get past that, we're missing it. The only reason why God is, will forgive you, no matter what you have done, is because he loves you. Amen. All right? Amen. We're going to look at a scripture here. Famous scripture, John 3.16. Say that with me. John 3.16. Okay. Famous scripture. Let me tell you a little about what's happening prior to that. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. And he goes at night and he sneaks and he sees Jesus. And he's saying, man, you are the guy. I can tell by the miracles that you have been doing. And Jesus talks to him about the kingdom and how to enter into the kingdom. He says, you must be born again. Say born again. born again. All right? And Nicodemus is like, what? Born again? How can I do that? He said, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. Right? So he's giving him an, an idea, a thought of what happens. There's a born again. There's a new spirit that you get. Then he continues and he transitions into saying this. He says, look. As Moses lifted up the serpent, the snake, in the desert, so will the Son of Man be lifted up. For us, we're like, what the heck is that? What the heck is that? Well, what was he was talking about, which Nicodemus knew, was that back Moses' time, the people were disobedient and snakes were biting them. And the only way they could be healed, God told Moses, put Make a bronze snake and put it on a stick and lift it up high. Whoever looks at the snake will be saved. They won't die. So Jesus is telling Nicodemus, who knew the scripture, he says, when Moses lifted up the serpent, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up high, meaning the crucifixion. All right? Then he transitions into these very words. Right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but what? Have eternal life. Have eternal life. Amen? Why would God forgive you? Because he loves you so much that he would give his only son. 
That's how much he loves you. He gave his only son. Can you imagine giving up your child? That's how much he loves you. That he would give his only son, right, that you should not perish. Amen? Isn't that crazy? That God will give his only son so you don't perish, that you don't die. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he would forgive you. Amen? I saw this scientist, a very well-known scientist, being interviewed by Larry King. I'm not sure if you saw that. And Larry King asked this scientist, what happens when you die? And the scientist said this, you're organic, right? He said, but we need fuel, so you eat food, amen? And when you eat fuel, you burn fuel, and that's why you give off heat, and that's your temperature. What's the normal temperature? 98.6 degrees. That's your temperature, right? When you eat, you're burning fuel, and that's your temperature. When you die, right, most people think you're cold, but actually not. You're room temperature, okay, because you are giving off heat with life. And what he was saying, this is what happens, what he believes after you die, is that now you're no longer giving off heat, and your body, your organic body goes back to the earth. Correct with the scripture. Amen? Right? And he says this. I want you to catch it. He says, that's why I myself, right, try to live the best I can, to love the best I can, to make a difference in this world the best I can. And Larry King says, but what happens after that? And this scientist said, nothing. Nothing. Okay? He said, nothing. He said, this is what wakes him up that he has a short moment and he has to love his best, make an impact in the community, his best. But after that, it's nothing. Let me tell you what, he has a partially right. Okay, why does he have that perspective? Because he has a perspective of himself and a perspective of God, which is in error. Think about this. God loves him so much that he wouldn't just break down organically right? He loves him so much that he would not perish, that he would have eternal life. That's how much God loves this man, but he doesn't know it. He doesn't understand how much God loves him, that he gave his only son, that he could have eternal life, not just live for this moment in this time, in this lifetime. Amen? Amen? So family, church, think about it. Yes, he's correct. We got to live our best. Amen? We got to love our best. We got to make a difference in this world. Amen? I totally agree. But you know what? That's not the end. That's not the end. And that's why we're all here today. Because we need to share that message. For those who don't understand why God would forgive them. Why does God forgive you? Because he loves you. Number two. Say number two. All right. You're with me. God loves you because God wants to save you. You guys have all the answers there. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants to save you. Amen. It says here, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be what? Saved through him. The purpose of God sending his son is to save you. To save us. Not to help you with your bank account, not to help you with your finances, not to save your marriage. And I, I'm, let me tell you, I, he can, God can help you. But the number one reason why Jesus came was to save us. Save us. Amen? Amen. All right? <clears throat> to save us from what? To save us from his judgment. I want you to think about that. Save us from his. You see, God never changes. His word is his word. God cannot have anything evil in his presence. Think about it. In the kingdom of heaven is holy. 
Nothing dirty, nothing unholy can be in heaven. Okay, are you with me? Are you with me? Think about it. He's a holy God, and he doesn't change, right? Nothing can come in his presence in his holy place. Amen? God came to save us, amen, from his own word, okay, through his son, right? His son paid the price for the law of sin and death. Say the law of sin and death. Okay, so God gave Moses the law, and there was a law. If you sin, something has to die. If you sin, something has to die. To atone. Atone means to cover your sin. Jesus not only covered, he took it away. Amen? He took it away. Not just cover from, the, from animal's blood, but Jesus took it away. He redeemed you so that you could be forgiven. Amen? He paid the penalty, and we receive forgiveness. How much does God love you? He loves you because he wants to save you, save us from his own law. Amen? From his own law. He can't, he can't break his law, but he created a way to save us, mankind, even that scientist. Amen? All right. Number three. Stay with me. Last one. Number three. Why would God forgive me? Because God did not want to say condemn me. God did not want to condemn you. He doesn't want to condemn you. We don't have a God that's saying here, you know what? Jodine, you are a sinner, you rotten person. I'm going to condemn you for everything that you've done in your life. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. right? That, that's not. Check this out. Okay, he's going to save you from that. Whoever believes in him is what? Say it. Read it in your scripture. Whoever believes in him is what? Not what? Condemned. Say not condemned. But whoever does not believe is what? Condemned. What does it say? Already. Whoa. Stop. Right? Whoever believes in him, that's Jesus, is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is what? Condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. God doesn't want to, you to stay in the state of condemnation. Amen? Are you with me? He doesn't want you to stay in the state of condemnation. That's the default. From the first sin of Adam, that's the default. The world is broken, everybody. Come on, you guys watch TV, right? You see what's happening, right? All this stuff, all, all this craziness. KKK, Black Lives Matter, everything. The world is broken, and it's not about all of that. It's about man's heart, a sinful heart. They're in a state of brokenness in their soul, okay? It's in the soul. And we get stuck on all these topics, but if you really look deep, the deep root is the soul of man is broken. All right? Here's the reprieve. The reprieve. Write this down. John 8, 1. Write this down. The reprieve. Here's the, the way. It says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why would God want to forgive me? Because he doesn't want to condemn you. Amen? He doesn't want to condemn you. If you feel condemned, let me tell you what. God doesn't want you to be in that state. He wants to take away, and he's done already, your sin. Amen? The penalty of sin. Almost there. And then it says, and this is the judgment. Here's the crisis. The light has come into the world, and the people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Stay with me. Verse 20. 
For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come into the light lest his works should be exposed. Okay, think about it. Those who are in darkness, who love darkness, they don't want to be exposed with the light. Amen? Why? Because it's, it's uncomfortable to be exposed. Amen? It's uncomfortable to be let known in your own mind and in between you and God. How many of you in the early days of church or even at some time or you've spoken with someone they said hey come to church and they're like oh my gosh no i can't go to church right i used to fear i used to have that fear about going to church i remember pastor crone's family was so into the lord at one time and crone and i weren't they said come to church come to church and and i'd be like oh yeah okay why did i have that hesitation because there's a fear of being exposed. Amen? There's a fear of going in and receiving what is true, and you're going to have to deal with the truth. Amen? And that's an honest thing. There's a little fear. What am I going to hear? What am I going to have to deal with? And that's how God's word, his word is his light, and it exposes the truth in your heart. And you have to deal with that. Amen? Here's a transition. Here's the, on the opposite side of that. It says, but whoever does not, who, whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Amen? It's total opposite. Living in the light. Living out in his truth. Amen? So number one, why does God, why would God forgive you? What's number one? Because he loves you. Why does God forgive you? Because what? He wants to save you. And the last one, why does he forgive you? Because he did not want to condemn you. Amen? So therefore, what I want all of us to do, and your challenge this week, okay, is this. Can you read the last line with me? Okay, ready? On the count of three. Ready? One, two, three, go. Let the light of Christ in your life and allow him to lead you in his truth. Amen? Amen. So church, let's take this message and share it. That God loves the people. He wants people saved. And he didn't send his son to condemn, but to save everyone. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you. We're so grateful, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, that you sent, Lord, from heaven to earth, Lord, to save us. Lord, right now, Lord, we are so grateful. for your word. Now this morning, if any of you at this time in your heart may be struggling with forgiveness or need God's forgiveness, if that's you this morning, every eye closed, every head bowed, if that's you, just, just slip up your hand. Just slip up your hand and just say, Lord, that's me. I need you. I need you this morning. I see you. Yes. I see you. I'm holding it out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just come in agreement with this prayer. Lord, we come to you and we declare you as Lord and Savior in our lives. And man, we so grateful we know we understand that you love us so much but lord forgive us of our sin and for those who struggle lord god with forgiveness lord allow lord god your holy spirit to strengthen your people lord lead us and guide us lord god let us be that light lord god into this world lord 
Use us, Lord. Use our church, Lord. Use our families, Lord. Cover us, Lord God. And we pray this in your precious name, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs>